Hey pal, thanks for clicking on this video. It makes you a goddamn hero in my book. Now, uh, here's a storyboard I made with good old fashioned AI and the shot it ended up becoming. Pretty close, huh? And here's another one and the shot that that became. Let's go with the wide shot and here's a bunch more examples you can use to judge me by. I'll show you how to do this. It's easy, but uh, first let's talk a little bit about maybe why you'd even want to do that. So I've been making a short film over the past few months and uh, I was just winging a cinematography because I was just shooting myself, but then I hired some actors and then time was money and you don't want to be sitting there like a Gilbert Grape type character, you know, contemplating life. So made some storyboards, maybe even get that lens selection down ahead of time, then you won't be sitting there with your pants down like the Simpsons episode or whatever the hell uh, that was because Simpsons done everything except for making AI storyboards. And let me tell you something, it all worked beautifully. We were able to shoot like four pages in half a day, but why use AI when you could just sketch or doodle or choke your chicken noodle? Well, as far as storyboarding goes, when I'm writing a script, it's like watching a movie in my head. And so for me, the whole process of filmmaking is just getting that vision of my mind out in the world so other people can see it. If we can use AI to more accurately describe what we're seeing in our mind, then the whole process of filmmaking becomes a cakewalk instead of a never-ending nightmare of, uh, that's not how I would have done it, uh, that's not the way I would have seen it, because look, that's how I would have done it, that's the way I saw it, and everything goes a lot faster, which is really the important part. As always, I'm going to be using Stable Diffusion and Comfy UI because the workflow is customizable, and if you don't know what either of those things are, welcome to the world of generative AI, buddy. But I'm actually going to start with Art Breeder and make a couple of custom characters just to try and get them somewhat consistent in my storyboards. And I'm also going to use the Art Breeder concept art thing for the clothing, but you don't got to use Art Breeder. You can use stock photos if you already have your movie cast, photos of your actors, or even photos of famous people. Nothing's going to end up looking 100% like the reference images anyway because it's AI, but you know, we can get some passing resemblances going. I'm going to use IP Adapter and Comfy UI to train some reference images of the characters so I can batch them into my scenes. The details don't matter so much because you can just download my example workflows and drag them into Comfy. They're in the comments. <laughs> now I do tend to go a bit overboard with this, doing different angles and such, but I think one good full body shot and one face shot is going to be enough for IP Adapter to transfer details. And the AI is going to paint in broad strokes anyway, but we should have, you know, features like hair color, eye color, hairstyle, clothing, all the major parts of character design sorted out because we want someone to be able to look at our storyboard and say, oh yeah, that's supposed to be Ellie Kemper. Ellie Kemper? You don't know her last name in the movie either, and don't pretend like you do. I photoshopped her head onto the art breeder body, and that seems to work pretty well for most things. We're going to do a rough photo bash in Photoshop, and this is where all these elements are going to come together. I actually did some location scouting ahead of time, and so I had backgrounds ready to go, but you can use stock photos or even generate backgrounds with AI. It doesn't really matter, so long as you know what the actual shooting location is going to look like. This is where I won't say the artistry comes in, but the framing, the composition, the angles, the camera movements, all those little details that go up into making a film, uh, we're not going to let the AI simply decide those things for us because we should have some kind of idea of how we want our film in the shot to be, otherwise why call ourselves filmmakers, directors, or whatever made up fancy term you want to label yourself to make you feel like a more important person than you actually are. First shot's going to be a wide shot of a mother and daughter holding hands. How are we going to get there? Well, hold on to your hats and put down your pipes because we're going full hedgehog. First thing we're going to do, get ourselves a reference photo of a mother and daughter holding hands. We're going to slap that into Comfy along with the IP adapter image we made. And using some Comfy spaghetti nonsense, uh, about as complicated as the movie Primer, we're going to generate some shots. Pick the ones we like best, and I'm going to use another AI library background remover to mat the people out, although I'm sure you can do the same thing with an iPhone or, or maybe even the fancy version of Photoshop now. Add a mat for the aspect ratio. We'll do the same thing for the daughter now. I use the art breeder image, but since this is a wide shot, a stock image of a, you know, a dirty girl works better because this is the future, man. And once we got the right ones generated, we'll mat that and we'll drop it in. Now, once you have your scene roughly bashed in, don't worry if it looks like crap because we're going to use AI to refine it. This time we'll use Stable Diffusion XL and feed the whole bashed image into it. It's AI, so how you want it to ultimately look is going to be largely up to the prompt. 
And I just found a style I liked with some referenced artists, but let's be honest, I was probably going to throw Ralph McQuarrie in there anyway. Maybe some Edward Hopper, maybe some Andrew, or NC Wife, you know, Americana. Ouch. But yeah. these other guys work out okay too. So I guess this is the big stink about AI, right? That we're stealing these dead artist styles. And I guess to an extent that's true, but we're not trying to create original works of art here. We're not trying to claim things as our own or get them hung in galleries. We're simply trying to use AI to visualize our films. And some of these old artists, you know, their storyboards, maybe they're wound up on eBay, maybe they are hanging in galleries, but that wasn't the original point of the art. The original point of the art was that they were getting paid to visualize the film so the DOP and director had something to go off of. So if you want those proud artists to, uh, you know, feel bad about the whole thing, why not train AI in your own sketches and paintings? Then you can feel good and also save yourself a lot of kind of work. Now when you use this many references in your prompt, the AI tends to, at least with these guys, anglicize the character and it already seems to have some vague idea of what an idealized woman looks like or an idealized child. So we'll have to guide it a bit by prompting the color of the hair and clothing and such and then maybe mix two or three different versions together and tweak the colors in Photoshop. Again, AI is stupid and inconsistent. We feed it random seeds with each new generation so each image is always going to be a little different. It's like people in that way. Sometimes you get a John Lennon, sometimes you get a Yoko. But once we have a few dozen generations and we've refined things and we're satisfied with our board, that's it. And now we have something to look at and aim for when it comes to making our other storyboards. Of course, you don't need to storyboard every single shot. You know, there was a whole dialogue scene where we just shot a bunch of coverage. I didn't even have time to storyboard it anyway, and it turned out fine, but complex action scenes and blocking or real detailed sequences where you really want everything laid down that's where you right. can do your story right music i like the thing that happened in jamaica called reggae it's happened if there's a music in jamaica called reggae god damn storyboards well there you go another stupid little video about using ai to make storyboards nobody can really complain about it except for maybe storyboard artists if the even exist anymore because frame forge studio binder and i'm sure i'm not the only one but hey I like making movies, you know, I'm building a doorway doll here, but that's another video for the YouTube algorithm to f me in the ass on. Maybe I should have been making Minecraft videos all along. And filmmaking's not going anywhere because it's a collaborative medium. Most of the magic of making a film is getting other people involved on your project and seeing what they can contribute. I wrote some lines on a page and they were okay, but then I brought the actors in and they brought those lines to life in ways I never thought possible, and that's not something you're ever going to get with AI. And so I'll continue using it to, to create things, animate with it, but it's no replacement for traditional filmmaking. It's just a way for those of us who weren't born into connections or money to get stuff going without ending up in the debtor's prison. But you never know what's going to happen in life, you know, a workman's comp claim can finally come through, or maybe you have a long lost uncle who dies and you inherit 75 grand to make your first feature. Life's magical like that sometimes too, but one thing I do know for sure, people are going to keep on rocking and making films forever. 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 forever.